Bob I normally called, but Raymond is my proper name, and I started in 1947, or 1946 actually, and in 1947, early 1947, I became an indentured apprentice, and uh, with the result that we had to do a compulsory two months each year at a technical college, which was set up by the rural industries at that particular time, and they, they had all sorts of crafts going from thatching, carpentry, rural carpentry, uh, stonework, etc., stone buildings, and uh, a farriery, and also blacksmithing. And it, over the years, they went on to teach us electric welding, gas welding, etc., in, in this trade. And we, we finished then at the tender age of 19 and we were thrown out to get on and, uh, and do our thing in the world. And I worked for him. The owner of the shop then was a Mr. Williams and he took it on from his father and I worked for him until 1960s or something like that um, when he died. No, 1950s, sorry and um, he died and then we took it on from there. My wife, we'd only got married in, in uh, 50, 56 and uh, he died in 59 and we came here to the shop. We were living in a new house at Treat Dunnock. It was a bit of a wrench to come to a, an old country cottage with not too many facilities but however we stuck together and I took the shop on from there. And, but in the meantime, my boss was quite progressive in, in modern things. He had a, a modern welding, acetylene welding, and uh, we persuaded him to buy an electric welder, which I was taught to use properly by the rural industries again. And we progressed from there, and then when we took the shop over ourselves, my brother, who was an apprentice to Mr. Williams uh, in latter years, he came and I finished his apprenticeship off. But unfortunately, he was killed in a motor accident. But we had a varying apprentices over the year. I think it was about 12 in all over the years. And uh, my elder son, he didn't come into the business. He was more interested in tractors. And my younger son, who you who you'll meet now, Patrick, he's the local blacksmith now, and a very good one too. I I am imagine, um, as you've seen his 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 work at the arch in in us the uh, uh, <coughs> jubilee arch um, was his making. Um, it it's. It's a long, 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 long progress, and and over the years, I mean, when I first came here, we did things the hard way. All our metal was cut off by a, with a, with me swinging a sledge and my boss holding a, a chisel, which was attached to a with a handle attached to it, and everything had to be cut off like that. They used to band wagon wheels, you know, the the big round metal wheels and <clears throat> the last time we did that and they used to do it in the forge actually where we are sitting now the forge was. and uh, he he did did i think it was 13 the last going off and we we just <clears throat> had got this new electric welder and it used to take them all day to prepare these wagon wheels and uh, with this new electric welder we cut off the the excess because they had to be made made slightly smaller to shrink to pull the pull the wheel together and uh, we we progress on to this welding and, and cutting with the oxyacetylene welding and we finished these wheels and the wheelwright went home at 12 o'clock that day instead of 5 o'clock and perhaps coming back the following morning to finish them off. And uh, they, they would laugh that, that they thought perhaps some of them would break with the well, but anyway, none of them did. They were all made of, of steel bands. And 
that, that was going on from there. And of course, tractors and, and implements, which they went around all the small farms. The farmers may have had a, an old tractor, but most of their implements weren't used because they got the war executive to come in and, and do their work. And then when they went, of course, they had all these implements, mowers and tedders and turvers, and we were putting draw bars on them, and that, that, that's the way forward we went. And then there was a lot of uh, building going on. I mean, there was nothing, nothing much went on through the 30s. There was no money around anyway. Um, some say that the war was a mar marvellous thing to get the employment down. But we were making then loads of roof timber brackets, door fittings, door hinges door latches. Um, the farm buildings were being upgraded, they were all going into milk and they had to have probably good quality uh, buildings and rightly so I suppose and and the local buildings they, they would come here for very substantial hinges and hooks and things like that and that, that we progress from there on through the through the time. <coughs> Not forgetting that that at that time horses were going out, we, sh we sh did shoe cart horses, and uh, but they were going out when I came here and the pleasure horse was coming in, which is a great thing now, there's lots of more pleasure horses about and I think than our probably working horses ever were. Um, and we we go on from there and, and now we we got all the modern kit that one can think of in the shop. Uh, they cut, they cut their metal off with a, with a bandsaw, and other things they cut off with, um, uh, with a laser cutter, and and uh, it's just press a button and pull, pull the thing along, and it just cuts the metal. That's electrical. <laughs> it's none of this swinging a sledge, which which I tell you was hard work. 